I got a call from my oldest friend's older sister. She told me that she had this group of friends and they were getting together and um, she was coming down from Seattle and she wished that I would come out and join them because her brother, my friend, told her that I was home and I was living with my parents and that must be kind of rough and she, w she figured that I probably needed, you know, maybe if I needed a job or I needed to find a place to live, these people could probably help me out because they're really, um, just a really great group of people and they're really well connected and, and this is not something that would happen in Los Angeles, right? So, you know, I do have old friends here and, you know, I, you know, this is, this is what being home is supposed to be all about. So, and it made me feel good that my friend might have mentioned me to his sister and she was somebody that I really admired and didn't ever make any didn't have any problems that I had or didn't make any mistakes I made. She, you know, her parents were like my dream parents and I wished that I could be adopted by them. And then she said, um, well, one of them you might know. Do you remember so-and-so from high school? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, and I did, I did remember him. And my very first memory of him was freshman year of high school. And I was waiting for my brother to finish football practice. And so I was sitting up watching the football practice and this guy, good looking guy, comes out of the locker room, runs down, late for practice, comes running out, runs down to the field. And I go, ooh, who's that? Because he was cute. I go, who's that? And my friend that was sitting there with me, she had, a, she was in my age and she had an older sister, two grades ahead, who went to school with him in, in his class. And she said, oh, that's so-and-so. He's bad news. Stay away from him. That's all she did was just mention him. That was like, I go, yeah, I, I know him. And I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't really put the two of them together, but um, at all. But anyways, I, I go there, and um, there is no get together. She's not even there. It's only him. He put her up to it. I'm like, where is so and so? And he's like, oh, I have a confession to make. I just really wanted to oh, get you alone and you know, get a chance to get to know you, and I didn't think you would, I thought you would turn me down if I just called you, so I had her call for me. And initially, initially, my instinct was, was this is weird, I don't, initially, for, but it, it only took a few seconds for, for me to shut that off. I mean, initially I was like, that doesn't seem right. And I was really kind of offended. I was kind of, and I was really disappointed because I really did need a friend. And I really did, you know, like, and she had done such a good job of selling the whole thing. I mean, like, I totally had looked forward to, like, knowing this group of people. And I like, I did know all those things. I did need a job and an apartment and all that stuff. But, um, so, you know, that was kind of weird. It was like, it, and she didn't call, like, the whole night. She didn't, like, well, of course, we didn't have cell phones then. But. But still, it was like, I don't even, she didn't call the next, she, I don't think she ever called, I don't think she called the next day. I don't think, I don't think we ever even talked about it until I saw her the next time, and then we just laughed it off. But, because quickly, I told myself that it was flattering. Quickly, I told myself, oh, wow, we went to such effort on my behalf. How flattering is that? So, I meet this man, who I vaguely know. I mean, I, I know him, I know who he is. Um, and we had seen each other, you know, a Christmas party or something like that and just kind of wait but I never, I never had never really had a conversation with him but he did all the stuff you know he did all the stuff that now I know now I know is classic stuff he had this sad story about why he didn't what you know why he didn't go to college and what he'd been doing all the years of, that I was at college and, and the story was that I was the privileged one and he was the hard luck case you know and um, now mind you at the time when I met him he was living in a house that he owned because he had a down pay, the down, but with the down payment that his dad gave him. He was driving a vehicle that his dad gave him. He was working at a job that his dad lined up for him. And he all of it he says is his dad owed it to him because of um, all the child support or whatever that he didn't pay when he was a kid or something like that. And um, and it, this is the, the big thing was that he would never get divorced. That his um, his parents had this brutal divorce and his dad was such an asshole and his dad took all the money and cheated his mom and they were, the kids grew up, you know, 
grew up poor, and then, let me just say, everything that he said about his dad, he totally did, did like way, you know, hundredfold. But I was, I had had an abusive relationship right before. Now I was, re and I was rejected, and I was rejected by my, I felt rejected by my parents. But I was looking for a purpose. I was looking for love. I was looking for, um, you know, a, 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 a home, a family. A, you know, I want, I wanted nothing more than to create a family. Prime Pickens, I was, and I was a complete target, totally groomed target.